What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 17 online connected franchise game. There are only two weeks left in the regular season of year two of the Primetime Football League, but there is a lot left to be decided as far as the NFC playoff bracket, and a lot of what's going to be decided is going to be happening today on the gridiron with the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Carolina Panthers. For starters, we have no idea what seed we're going to be in the playoffs. The simplest part about the whole NFC playoff picture is the fact that we have secured at least a wild card berth. But anything after that, we could be the one seed, we could end up being the six seed somehow. You guys saw we entered this game with the same exact record as the one seed Philadelphia Eagles as we get that interception with Bobby Wagner right there. But if we lose this game against the Carolina Panthers, not only do we lose a shot at getting the number one seed, we wouldn't even get a first round bye. The Panthers would have the tiebreaker by beating us in this game. So there's a lot to be decided in this game alone. And on top of that, as Thomas Rawls trying to truck a guy, we don't even have our division quench. You guys saw the Rams battling a wildcard contention at 10 and 4. If we lose this game, we have a week 17 matchup with the Los Angeles Rams that if the Rams win their week 16 game as Jimmy Graham gets that third down catch, that week 17 game could come down to who wins the division and who, you know, ends up being on a five or six seed or something like that. So there's it's a lot of messy stuff. But only two weeks left. You'd think the picture would be simple, but oh baby, are these games important as Thomas Rawls gets some points on the board right there on that touchdown run. So far, so good for us. The other thing that I'm keeping in mind as we play against the Panthers this week is that the Panthers could be a team that we see in the playoffs sometime as this is a miscommunication between quarterback and receiver that ends up being Cam Newton's second interception of the game already is Jimmy Graham getting a second catch of the game in the middle of the field. Wilson off to a good start. Thomas Rawls also off to a good start trying to run his way in for his second rushing touchdown in the first quarter. Second down back to Rawls but he goes nowhere. Now third down might as well run this ball one more time man on man action right there see whose line can get the push right there it was the defense of the panthers and on fourth down we take a field goal right there we got that field position via our defense might as well not put that in jeopardy by going for it right there and get ourselves up 10-0 and on top of that this is a sim league so there's not too much of going for it on fourth down in many situations as this panthers team has a lot of players that you guys wouldn't expect to be on the carolina panthers one of them that you would expect Kelvin Benjamin who just boxed this out to get that uh, catch right there but there's a lot of players that you know you wouldn't expect like Alshon Jeffries is on this team this is you know, Latavius Murray running the ball James White is the backup running back there's guys on defense you wouldn't expect this game Chancellor gets an interception on third down he was running that out route a couple of times and we were able to eventually just you know adjust and put Cam Chancellor in a purple right there and got us an interception but yeah he has Stephon Anthony he's got a number of different guys on this team this guy must have done a lot of trades to get the Ross said he has on this team but his Panthers team after all that is pretty scary especially the amount of weapons that they have on the offensive end led by Cam Newton third down and six three and a half little under three and a half minutes left in the quarter trying to get this first down throwing intended for pro size but Luke Keekly that all pro linebacker able to swat that ball away and nearly intercepted as we kick the ball out of bounds at the 18 yard line so back to a point I was trying to make earlier about the fact that we might see the Panthers in the playoffs is a pretty decent chance is that I don't want to show this guy the playbook. If you guys remember last season, last season against the Philadelphia Eagles in the regular season, I had that not show the playbook game as we send the blitz and the blitz gets home. Mike Morgan with the sack. So with that not show the playbook game, as Earl Thomas is going to get an interception on a deep pass and ended for someone in the middle of the field. You know, we didn't run all of our favorite plays against the Eagles, and we ended up losing that game. I believe it was like. 3-24 to 24 or something like that. It wasn't really too much of a game. Our offense really stunk it up. So I don't want to show this guy exactly our whole playbook. I want to save some of that for the playoffs as Doug Bowen gets the first down right here. And we're in a position to not only get the win, but not show the playbook either with the way our defense is playing. So I like that as we are looking to get some more points going into halftime, maybe make this a three possession game. And that's mainly on the backs of our defense forcing four first half interceptions from Cam Newton as that little drag route is going to force us to call a timeout. Second down and nine. 18 seconds left Russell Wilson for Jimmy Graham in the back of the end zone but it's broken up now third down to nine screen pass pro size got it fighting trying to get the first but he only gets brought down the 18 yard line and that will not move the chain so on fourth down and two that brings up a field goal attempt and a chance to get a 13-0 lead except it's a fake Jimmy Graham running with the ball trying to 
reach the end zone, doesn't get there, and not only that, but we don't even get any points on that play because the clock ran out, and that's something I had no idea was going to happen when I ran that fake. I didn't put much too much thought into that fake field goal as our rookie receiver Walden right there gets injured. That's definitely something to watch right there because it looked like he was in a lot of pain. We do have receiver depth. We have Tyler Lockett, who's barely even seen the field in the last couple of games. So, you know, Walden's actually hurt. We can just move Curse and Lockett and Graham around and all that. We should be fine as that's a catch by Curse, but not a first down, forcing us to punt the football. But yeah, that fake field goal, I didn't really put much thought into it because, um, I just thought, oh, maybe a fake field goal. Maybe I get it. I didn't really realize there was only eight seconds left in the half. I didn't put that much thought. And then I didn't realize the fact that the clock could run out of me and I couldn't get any points. If I thought all that through, I would have just kicked the field goal. As Cam Newton trying to run the ball. But he's going to get taken down by Mike Morgan. I believe that actually counted as a sack. Third down and eight. That's a catch by James White out the backfield. The receiving running back getting the first down. Now Latavius Murray running the football. But we have been very good at stopping the run. Not only this season, but last season as well with this Seahawks team. With this deadly front seven, third down in inches, trying to get a stop on the run right there. But the fullback dive of Mike Tolbert is going to move the chains. Now, here comes a run with Latavius Murray, who's gonna break a tackle and break free. He should be scoring a touchdown, but there is a flag on the field. Now, the first thing to know about this play is that the flag was illegal blocking in the back, and that's gonna bring the touchdown all the way back. The second thing to know about this play is that my controller actually died at the start to play and that contributed to part of the reason why that touchdown run happened so the fact that there was a holding flag on that play was pretty fortunate for us to say the least because I was really not there for that play my controller batteries were low for like that entire first half of the game and they were just waiting to die it was kind of affecting like the way I would call audibles and hot routes and all of that the way I would move around on defense and eventually you know once my controller actually died I just asked my opponent to just pause the game for like five minutes let my controller just charge up for a second as Latavius Murray is charging up the Panthers fan base by running it in for a touchdown on that screen pass and now after calling that timeout it seems like the Panthers have a little bit of momentum only down by three after the disastrous first half they had now one thing you would think about in this game is the fact that we could have had three extra points if we just kicked that field goal as we get sacked right there and that's definitely something that's in the back of my mind a little bit i'm kind of regretting that decision as we get sacked again pressure off the edge only rushing three third down and 25 shaq thompson comes in unblocked for the sack and the panthers don't only have the momentum they have a huge just monsoon coming in right now straight for the Seahawks and straight to try to get a first round bye in the playoffs and this is something we definitely want something we definitely want to fight for and the whole not showing the playbook strategy might be coming back to bite us as Kelvin Benjamin goes up high and catches the ball at the 17 yard line in field goal range to try to tie the game up but more importantly a touchdown to try to take the lead in this very important regular season game James White spinning actually this is Jarek McKinnon spinning and going nowhere third down in 10 Cam Newton nowhere to go with the ball except running himself and Cam Newton moving the chains with that first down now goal to go Murray up the middle but Murray as he's been all game can't find a rushing lane second and goal now it's Tolbert trying to run the ball but Tolbert goes nowhere now third and goal at the three yard line handoff Murray one on one and he fights his way in the end zone for a touchdown the PAT is up and good and it's a four point game which means we need to get a touchdown on this drive to get the lead back in our possession even though our offense has been pretty dormant since midway in the second quarter as now Russell Wilson trying to turn it up but we throw an interception instead feeling the pressure forcing the pass and it's intercepted by Zach Brown and at that point I was like screw the whole not showing the playbook thing let's show the playbook and let's get it going unfortunately we're not in a rhythm at all, so I just threw a straight interception. We had guys open. And now, this whole playing mind game stuff might be coming back to bite us. It's 39. We need the stop. We get the stop. And now a 48-yard field goal for Graham Gano. This is no gimme, but Gano is straight down the middle and good and makes it a full touchdown game as Tyler Lockett trying to return the ball from about the 18-yard line. Gets a little bit of a chip block, but still brought down at the 30-yard line. Now, minute 43, boy. It's Graham wide open, but he drops the pass. And once again, at this point, 
I basically said screw the whole not showing the playbook thing as Tyler Lockie gets the catch. We're all about trying to get the number two seed at this point. Trying to get an extra week off as Russell Wilson just going to throw that ball away on first down. Need about 50 or 48 more yards to try to get ourselves in the end zone. But once we get there, I'm thinking it might be time to go for two. Screw overtime. Let's just go for two and try to win this game. But first, we got to get that touchdown. And we take a positive step by finding CJ Prosites out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Next play, Wilson looking to pass and throwing it out of bounds, feeling the pressure, but a flag on the field. And as you may guess, it's intentional grounding since he threw it from the pocket. Second and 23 after a loss of 13 on the play. Not even the check down is going to work. The worst play possible because the clock continues to run. Third down and very long. Russell Wilson getting Doug Baldwin, but it's inbound once again, and we call our final timeout. Fourth and eight, last gas for the Seahawks. Trying to look downfield with Wilson, got a lot of time, and Wilson taking a shot for the end zone, and it's intercepted. James Bradbury with the INT that's gonna lock this game up. And we hit the wrong button on that play. As you guys might be able to tell, that was definitely not the intended play right there. I meant to, I believe, the B receiver that was, like, crossing in the middle. And I hit the, I guess, A button. I was so confused when the ball went in the end zone. I was like, no, 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 no. And, you know, even if we got that completion, no telling if we would have actually gotten a touchdown on that play. But, um, I mean, we just made a couple of mistakes at the end right there that really did us in. And the main one was that interception we were up or down by four. We should have really just punching in for a touchdown right there but like i said the whole not showing the playbook thing really knocked us out of rhythm and now we might be knocked out of a chance of getting a first round bye and week 17 could be a battle for the nfc west so leave a like in the video if you guys enjoyed this game good game to my opponent and then fighting it out till the end i'll uh, subscribe for more man 17 gameplays and i'll catch you guys next time